Hi, I'm Terrell Turner, the host of the Business Talk Library. And today I have a special guest on, Mr. Carl Kern. And the reason why I think this guest is very special is because, as you'll see, he's a man that wears many hats and doing many great things in the accounting and finance space from being a professor to being the CEO of the numbers guys, as well as his own firm, the Carl H. Kern LLC. Carl, welcome to the show. Thanks, Terrell, and most important, thank you for allowing me to be here. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Carl, before we jump into you know, your, your very rich background or what you're up to now, tell us a little bit about kind of what was Carl's life before CEO of the Numbers Guys and adjunct professor? What was your background? Private industry. I graduated with a degree in accounting from Temple University which I actually went there as a radio television film major. Wow. And my sophomore year, I changed majors to accounting, graduated with a degree in accounting, and spent over 20 years in private industry and basically labeling myself as a soup the nuts accountant. I think the only things other than income and fran other than income franchise taxes and payroll, I basically had my hands in all areas of accounting whether the companies were startups or multi-billion dollar corporations. Wow, wow. So now you said something that was very interesting. You went in in the film and production. So what was it about it that made you change from that path? It looked like it was going to be difficult, if not impossible, to get a job in what I was getting into. It was the performance track, but lo and behold, this was before cable really established itself. So maybe... Had I stuck it out, who knows where I would have been, but it just looked like the opportunities weren't there. And I was fortunate living in a dormitory where a lot of business majors were dorm mates, and they really energized me to get a better appreciation of the business work. Because I'm basically more of a liberal arts type person, Terrell. Business never really was in my blood until my sophomore year in college. Gotcha. Gotcha. So did you find it a little challenging once you went into accounting with like the rules and the structure since, you know, that really wasn't your original forte? I think one of the things I was blessed is I was able to grasp a debit and credit really quick because the first course I took was financial accounting, which I believe I got in the third week of the semester. And the debits and credits just it was easy. It really got easy. So I think there was a natural inclination to understand the process of accounting, of identifying, especially recording, and the thing that I'm really into now, the communication, which is bringing me back to my radio, television, film interest. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about, you know, your, your radio, the film, the broadcasting kind of content space, because that's the space that I live in. And you and I have had many conversations about this with the numbers guys. Um, what exactly are you trying to do there with the numbers guys so the audience can hear your story? We want to have a one-stop shop where accountants, and I'm talking accountants to REL that may be entry level, possibly senior, le senior level in the, account in, in, in the accounting profession, business owners, entrepreneurs, financial analysts, maybe senior level analysts, but primarily the staff level analysts, students and taxpayers, be able to get answers to their questions through people who've been there, done that. Gotcha. That's basically the overview and how we're going to do it. And this is one of the things I've learned teaching. People learn from different media. I find with students, some of them are going to learn from a slide deck. Others will learn from a textbook. Others will learn for a bit, from a video. What I want to be able to do is offer this variety to our followers where if they can find something that resonates with them, they're going to be able to accomplish what we want them to accomplish. And that is better their professional lives. Mm -hmm. 
And you know, that's something that I find to be interesting, even as I've moved through different jobs that I had in accounting and finance to where whenever I'd have like new employees on the team, whether they were staff or even at like the senior analyst level, I spent a lot of my time kind of pretty much trying to teach them the practical side of accounting and finance. And I realized, you know what, there really isn't a, a go-to tool for that. So I think, yeah, you're definitely on to something great. Yeah, and I really think that when it comes to what we're trying to accomplish, I really think the beauty of it, Terrell, is having what I call the fa a family of professionals, obviously yourself being part of, part of the family, where we're offering so many experts who cover different fields, where if someone says, well, Carl doesn't handle taxes, well, we, got, we have someone who does. Yeah, and what, I think what that's true. You know, just quick, one of our contributors doesn't handle a finan a financial forecasting. We have someone who does. So it's being able to offer this, this combination. And the thing I love it the most, Terrell, and this is one of the things uh, getting, I've learned about one of our uh, friends, Andrew Codd, essential skills. We have the family, the, the group of professionals who have the essential skills for accountants, business owners, entrepreneurs, financial analysts, students, and taxpayers. Give me credit on that. I actually covered it alphabetically, which I like to do, but that's the big thing. And that's what really excites me. Awesome. Awesome. I, I am very excited about, you know, what's going on with the numbers guys. And for those that are watching and listening, as you heard, you know, Carl mentioned, I, the business talk library is partnering with the numbers guys we will be making some exclusive content that will only be on the numbers guys platform. I mean, and it's going to be great stuff. And as you talked about with all the different contributors to be able to, like I said, to, to hear experts in their field that are actually working in the field and to hear us have conversations about different aspects of accounting and finance. Um, so definitely look out for the numbers guys as all of that great content is coming up. Now, another piece I wanted to talk about was the adjunct professorship. So how did you get into being an adjunct professor and what has that experience been like? Well, it basically started, Terrell, when I decided to leave private industry to start my own practice. I figured I needed to have a plan B, or I like to say my favorite word in the English language is contingency. I wanted to have a contingency, and that was teaching. And in graduate school, I was fortunate to have one of my professors who had a similar career path, private industry, consulting, academics. So I asked him, how would you suggest I go about the process? He gave me advice. I followed it. And in 2008, I began my journey as an adjunct, and I've been doing it since the fall 2008 semester. Wow, wow. So how have you seen, you know, the, the change? I mean, when you start to talk about starting in 2008, I mean, with the great recession that hit, and just seeing that happen over time, and, and how did you think the students their mind about accounting and finance and their attention to accounting and finance, has it changed much over time? It's basically the same that I've seen. I think the greatest challenge I've had, Terrell, is the overwhelming majority of my students, other than when I'm teaching intermediate accounting, are management majors. They're not accounting or finance majors. So what I've had to do is I've had to be able to establish a methodology or an approach where they can get a greater grasp of the importance of accounting and finance, which of course I have to make a shameless plug. Book number two, Connecting the Dots. Basically what I've done, Terrell, with this book, which you can find, by the way, on the Numbers Guys website, thenumbersguys.com, being able to take accounting and finance and connect it to other fields of study, economics, marketing, human resources. When I teach financial management, 
one of the things I've been able to do is connect the concept of operating leverage and apply that to human re resources in terms of compensation plans. And I wow. think what my students get out of that is that they don't live isolated from accounting and finance, whether they work in human resources, whether they work in marketing, especially whether they're small business owners or they're entrepreneurs. Their journey has to go through the accounting and finance streets, neighborhoods, cities, however you want to however you want to label them. So what I'm able to do with whatever accounting course I'm teaching or whatever finance course I'm teaching is connecting them to that, that to their real life situations. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now this one is probably, I guess you say a shameless plug for something that I believe. So I'm interested to get your thoughts on it. Now, when I talk to business owners and, you know, being a person who is accounting and finance, I always tell them like, you know, Accounting is the basic language of business. Like you have to understand it if you're going to be effective in business. Now, that's my opinion that I share with them. What has been your perspective on that? Oh, every accounting course that I teach, I start with this quote. It's on page 67 of the book, Moneyball. I was too lazy to grab the book off my, <laughs> off my bookcase, Terrell. The statistics were not merely inadequate, they lied. And the lies they told led people who ran major league baseball teams to misjudge their players and mismanage their games. Statistics made sense only as numbers, not as language. Language, not numbers, is what interested him. And what I reinforce to my students, Terrell, with that quote is you're gonna, I tell them you're gonna hear me use words language, communication, vocabulary, dictionary. I explain to students that gap is a dictionary. It shows us how to, exp how to express ourselves. And this gets into, we've talked about this, where I had been involved with an organization that focused on the promotion of innovation and entrepreneurship. I was a board member and participated in a number of committees. Well, one of our events was with an angel investor and he told the audience, many of them entrepreneurs, I don't care what your idea is. I want to know how I'm going to make money. Well, the way you answer that question is you communicate, but you communicate with the language of accounting. And that is something we can get into when we talk about my practice. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's talk about the practice and what are the types of services that you offer under your practice? The th three, three main areas, accounting systems, financial analysis, and financial planning. Basically, my practice, Terrell, has been either working with startups or middle market companies. And a lot of those situations, if not all of them, the common denominator is financing. With the middle market companies, it was dealing with asset-based loans to make sure that the receivables and inventory were proper. And then of course, going through the income statement to see whether there were any profitability issues. The startup work, that's kind of changed a bit because there was a gentleman I was blessed to work with for several years. He passed away three years ago. He would bring, he brought me in initially to analyze the financial uh, forecast from the financials, but the entrepreneurs didn't have the, the infrastructure or the personnel to put the forecast together. So I would come in and I would put together the forecast and financial statements, then, then analyze them because he wanted answers to two questions. What's the valuation and what are the funding requirements? Wow. And I guess when it comes down to that, how many business owners do you know are savvy enough to be able to answer that question, those two questions on their own? It's difficult because a lot of people I've worked with, they may be marketing people, um, they may be engineers, they may be salespeople, that exposure to accounting and finance 
isn't it wasn't established and it's no fault of their own that was something picking up in a lecture i learned from a gentleman who was a college professor and talked about systematic thinking people go to school they learn all of these individual fields but they don't know how to connect these fields to run a business so a lot of people i've dealt with them being able to answer those questions and especially terrell that question from the angel investor it's difficult if not impossible for them to answer gotcha gotcha so carl now you talked about several things that you're you, you're doing so let's take them one by one so the numbers guys where can they find the numbers guys online and on social media on on the on the web the numbersguys.com is the numbers guys website social media primarily is really just strictly linkedin we have a company page on linkedin which is updated on average three times a week to, to learn more about what's going on with the numbers guys awesome now as far as you know your professorship where are you uh, where where are you currently a professor i am at dean college in franklin massachusetts i started there just just last week the semester started last week it's my first um semester teaching there gotcha gotcha and then the last thing for your own firm where can people find that online and where can they find you on social media social media i work strictly uh, ex primarily on linkedin i do have a twitter page people could follow me there it's more of an extension of linkedin on my website Carl H. Kern, K A R L H K E R N dot com, basically explaining my life, for lack of a better word, as an accountant, a lecturer, and a producer. Awesome. Awesome. Now, before we wrap up, there's one question I like to ask every guest that comes on is when you think about you know, your field of expertise in accounting and finance. What would be two pieces of advice that you would give an entrepreneur based on your expertise? Oh, the first question, if the, if the entrepreneur wants to raise money, the entrepreneur has to explain how the prospective stockholder is going to make money. And what that really boils down to, Terrell, is and having an opportunity to work with a, a, a strategic and marketing consultant i learned this from him you have to answer the question why would someone buy what i sell and that answer from my perspective in accounting is in your revenue revenue validates the answer to that question and then we just work from there awesome well carl thank you so much for coming on the show oh. um Terrell, thank you for having, having me you. no thank you for having me Thanks for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like what you heard and you want to hear more, be sure to click the subscribe button and follow us on all social media platforms as the Business Talk Library.